We talked a little bit about Martin Truex Jr. He has never won on the high banks at Bristol. And, of course, we have done away with the dirt race at Bristol. We were back on the concrete uh, a couple of days ago. And he goes, you know, for me, I was kind of okay with the dirt. It was very, very easy to get sucked into running too hard. I I let a couple guys go. I'm like, I want to at least stay in the top four. And Larson started pressuring me for fifth. I'm like, screw it. He can have it. I'm going too hard. I know I'm going too hard. Sure enough, end of that run, he threw the anchor out and we went back by him. And, you know, then Ty and Christopher pushed each other a little too hard there, you know, with about 100 to go. And and they paid the price as well. So it was fun. I feel like I did exactly what I needed to and I was in the exact right position coming down to that last stop. We just lost too much time, so need to look at that. But definitely a different way of racing here. And it was a lot of fun. You know, listening to him speak jeff he was basically saying the same thing you just said a segment ago where you've got to be smart enough to know that even if you're letting people go you're letting them go because they're running harder than you and they will come back to you and that's exactly what happened for truex yesterday or you know the the end game was going there nobody was going to fix the racetrack yesterday and and the situation it was across the board i mean i think that's the one thing that a lot of people are having trouble embracing nobody was immune to this particular disease you know if you want to call it that and i think what he explained to you was the reason why he finished second and was challenging for the lead late in the race i mean he was making you know strategic moves and trying not to slide the car and yet not trying to wreck his teammate i mean i thought it was you know really quite a cat and mouse battle between him and his fellow teammates it was who could get through traffic better Mm -hmm. than 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 the other guy you know it it's kind of funny because you 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 think about the race that happened yesterday and you wonder to yourself and i know this is a question you wanted to pose doug whether or not this is something that fans liked or want to see and it'll be interesting to see i know we talk about it a lot and it's kind of industry uh you know speak but to see what jeff goals or Jeff Gluck's poll comes out if it was a good race, yes or no. Um, I I was thoroughly entertained. I thought it was fascinating to watch. You made mention of it too on the air, Doug, where you said, well, you know, this same thing happened where cars were going slower to race better in the Daytona 500, and people hated that. But but this itself, I think, put on a really great show. Well, I think the payoff at Daytona sometimes is the speed. Right. That's, that's the thing. Here, it's it's the competition. I don't always rely on stats to make my point, but, Jeff, I will this time. In a 500-lap race that nearly 100 laps were run under caution, there were 54 lead changes and 16 different drivers. Almost 40% of the field led a lap. If that isn't entertaining, I'm not sure what is. Good question, and I was going to pose it back to you from your vantage point. And I know you got a years of experience of going to Bristol and racing and calling races at Bristol. Was that hard to keep up with? with Oh, absolutely. I mean, I listened to some of your broadcast and I also was watching TV. I watched, I wanted to get, you know, what, what are these guys having to comment about? Cause everything's moving so fast. I mean, if you weren't watching, um, what was happening on that racetrack and I'm talking about all the way around the racetrack, you could just, you could get lost in the moment. I I looked down at my information and Denny Hamlin was leading and I I probably looked at something for 30 seconds. I looked back up and I said, well, and Denny and Mark goes, no, he's eighth now. (laughs) Right. Because he fell off that quick. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was distracted for a half a minute. So yeah, it was a challenge to call this race. Utterly fascinating, I I think. But the rub comes in that I don't think any of us, we just talked about it, know exactly why or how that happened. So how how do we replicate that? You know, if somebody watched that race yesterday and they say, oh, man, that was an amazing, I think a lot of people can probably agree to the fact that we need to to tweak it just a little bit. You, you know, you need to look at the recipe, which we don't even know exactly what that is for why it happened the way it happened, and tweak it to where tires last 70, 80 laps. That would be the sweet spot. However... How do you do that when you don't even know exactly what got us to that place yesterday? You can't, and we do not want to see that be that close again because we got fortunate that nobody really was, you know, I, how should I say this? How many times have we watched guys go out, blow a right front tire, knock the wall down, and start hollering about low air pressure? Not anything more than that. You drop too much air pressure and you blew the right front tire out, or you blow up right rear out. doesn't matter. With this new one, you can put too much camera in it and do the same thing with the rear tire as much as you can in the front. My point is, 
we're we don't like it when people put J, you know, PJ one or put risen on the racetrack. Cause they say, Oh, that takes away from the, the purity of what's happening. All of these factors. We don't know, Alexis, which one of them was more contributing to the situation. Was it a green racetrack? Was it particular compound they came back with? Was it the race tra- race car itself? Cause the trucks didn't have a problem, you know? So we, we've got so many unknowns and so many variables we have got an what would you call it, Doug? An anomaly? No, it it wasn't an anomaly because we've and been around and no, this is not something we've seen this at different times during the history of the sport, but we we've never really wanted to replicate it because how many times do you want to see guys through ten sets of tires in a five hundred right. lap race? We we can speculate this. The guy that they refer to as a generational talent, Kyle Larson, was perplexed. It wasn't fun, you know, to ride around like that, but you never really knew like how to manage your stuff and. Then there at the end, you know, when we were all dying and whatnot, and everybody's afraid to pit because you just didn't want to get caught on pit road with somebody spinning out and then your laps down. So for whatever reason, it, it all cycled through. We all had to make a green flag stop and, yeah, just kind of nurse it home from there. So, yeah, that was that was odd, odd that, you know, rubber wouldn't lay down and all that. It was just weird. So here's what I get from that. You know, we, we hear from Martin Truex Jr. just a little bit ago, and he said, man, that was so much fun. I, I You know, I, it was weird, but I loved it. And then Kyle Larson says, it was weird, and, that, and it wasn't much fun for me. I think the difference between those two guys is one grew up a short track racer, and, and, and the other one, you know, on dirt. And there's the difference there. Now, clearly, Kyle Larson, we talk about him all the time, generational talent. He still finished fifth because he's that good of a race car driver. Right. But I think the difference is in, you know, how how they came up, what they're used to doing, the fact that, that Martin Trucks Jr. and Denny Hamlin and even Brad Kozlowski, I don't know if we have any, I don't think we have any audio from him, but I, I know quotes that he gave after the race saying, this was great, I loved it. And I think it's the difference in their backgrounds and, and how they came up uh, in this sport and what they're used to doing. No, I, and I agree with you. I think, you know, when you have the ability to control your emotions and realizing that pacing yourself right now, uh, you know, let's just say that, that they're raced at 80%. And most of the time we always hear about racing is done at 90 to 95 or 99 percent. And they probably yesterday's race was done at 80 percent because step over that number, tires wore out that much faster. And you really set yourself up for the losing a bunch of laps you would never, ever get back. Up in the booth, we were watching the lap times early in the race before people realized what was going to happen. 16 second laps later on at one stretch. 18 and a half second laps. They got the message. They slowed down.